you phone in. Here we go. Sound trick on the live stream. Uh, can someone just say something on the Skype call? See if that's coming through okay. Yes, perfectly fine. Perfectly. Okay, that's good. That came through. Thank you. Okay, let's begin uh, the 25th health teaching workshop, which is called the shielding, the skin, the shielding defense system. And uh, we'll, we're going to start with the um, Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute promotional video to begin with here. And we'll show that and then we'll get into the workshop. Okay, here we go. Where does humanity go from here? What have we tried to do? What if there is more, much more? The Keshe Foundation is proud to announce a new way to bring humanity forward through technology that brings humanity in line with the natural operation of the planet and universe itself. The new science and technology discovered and developed by the nuclear engineer Moran Kesh centers upon the use and control of magnetical gravitational fields. This new body of knowledge opens the road to hundreds of potential applications, which offer solutions to most of the fundamental problems of the world, such as water, food, environmental contamination, and shortages of energy. The Keshe Foundation is proud to unveil the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. Nestled amidst the beautiful shores of Bari, Italy, the Institute is poised to become a central hub in the spreading of plasma technology and knowledge. With its state-of-the-art 21st century facilities, the Institute will be able to provide students and staff an immersive way to learn the plasma technology to be the leaders of the new generation of scientists and plasma engineers. The Keshe Foundation has opened the door to the world for peaceful usage of technology that is independent of the limited resources that are available on Earth. This is an understanding of how everything works together in harmony in our universe, and it applies to everything from the smallest to the biggest, from atoms to galaxies. We all are able to collectively work together in pursuit of knowledge, innovation, and solutions for our society. This learning environment is new to the world, where there will be no test to confirm your understanding. The knowledge of everyone will be respected and allowed to flourish in a nurturing environment. Hands-on testing and experimenting will be widely used in conjunction with roundtable discussions to bring all opinions and knowledge forward. Students will be introduced to a change in the ethos of working in collaboration. Students will experience firsthand how we share knowledge in a free and open manner. Graduating students are expected to share the knowledge they gain from the university within their respective communities and nations. All formal teachings, lectures and presentations will be in the English language, with technology available for immediate translation. Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute will be offering three-year executive master programs for undergraduate degree students and one-year executive master programs for graduate degree students in the following fields. Space transportation, new plasma technology, health, agriculture, materials, energy. The health section is designed to make students able to live in space without the need to return to Earth. To this end, the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute has found processes for many diseases including ALS, cancer, coma, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis. Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute will offer online teaching courses which will enable anyone, anywhere around the world to enroll and increase their knowledge and understanding. Students will have the opportunity to direct their work towards commercial spin-offs and seek funding through the help of the Keshe Foundation. The access to the new science and new technologies is openly available for peaceful use to the benefit of mankind to make a better world today. Now you can be part of the changing world and the new knowledge. All commercial spin-offs are intended to be open source and patent free. This is part of the core ethos of the Keshe Foundation 
and the Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute. Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute will have its official inauguration on April 21, 2015, with courses commencing soon after on May 4, 2015. The students of the Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute will be the leaders of the future who will make changes in all areas of space technology, science, medicine, agriculture, and energy. Anyone is able to apply, but acceptance is through invitation only. No prerequisites are required. We will be accepting approximately 250 students for the three-year Executive Master's Program and 120 students for the one-year Executive Master's Program. We welcome humanity's participation in the knowledge of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. Where does humanity go from here? That is up to you. Apply today. Oops, I'm sorry my microphone wasn't on. Okay, sorry this microphone wasn't on there. Um, the, this is the beginning of the 25th Cash Health Teaching Workshop. This is a uh, topic is the skin, the shielding defense system. And we'll be speaking with um, or hearing from Dr. Elia Kostova of the Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute. And um, after that, uh, after she describes the anatomy of the skin and how it acts as a shielding defense system, uh, we'll hear from Mr. Kesh and get his point of view on the subject. Okay, without further ado, let's move into the workshop. Um, Dr. Ellie, are you there? Yeah, hello everybody. Hi. It's me, Elia, and nice to be with you and the 25 Cash Foundation, Cash Foundation Health Teaching Workshop. Today the subject is skin like a shielding defense system of our body. So we begin with the first slide. The first slide is a representation for you that actually our skin is our cloth, our dress, and uh, she protect our bones, our muscles, and all internal organs from outside, from outside the environment. Actually, in uh, the adult human, the surface of the skin is, is more or less 1.2 square meters, and the thickness is between the 2 or 3 millimeters. The average the square inch of each skin part holds like 650 sweet glands, 20 blood vessels, 60,000 melanocytes, and more than 1,000 nerve endings. The function of our skin it is so complex. First of all, this is the protection of our body from outside world also contains the cells where they belong to immune system this is the lung and hands cells second function is a uh, sensation inside of our skin and that a lot of nerves actually our skin this is the outer brain of us and during our explanation you will see uh, what is the relation between the brain and skin? The skin takes sensation like a heat, cold, touch, pressure, vibration, and also so many other somatosensory um, 
sense from body and from all the world. The skin works like a temperature regulator. It is regarding what the temperature is outside and inside of us because of the skin function, we are able to recognize the temperature difference between outer and inner world of us and then to settle the temperature function and uh, the centers in our brain. The next one function is, is the control of evaporation. Because of that function, we don't lose the fluids out of us and we keep the water balance inside of our body. Storage function has also our skin. This is the storage place for the lipids, water, the synthesis of uh, vitamin D, the synthesis and keeping of part of the vitamin B also. Inside of our skin, we have a lot of glands, how you, I explained it to you in the previous workshop. And one of them, they the sweet glands. And actually, through our sweet glands, we evaporate urea. And if you remember, the shape of the sweet glands was exactly like glomerulus in kidney. And they, both of that organs, they evaporate urea from uh, out our body to uh, out the world. Also, uh, we have excretion with different minerals, so we are able to test our mineral level even through the sweat of our skin. Through the skin, we absorb different kind of elements from air, water, and different materials. And actually, the pores inside of the epidermis is more or less 0 0.25 up to 0 0.40 millimeters. So through them, we are able to absorb different molecules, also oxygen. Actually, we have... Uh, the breathing function of our skin, we breathe with our skin and have so many uh, cases where people are not able uh, to dress themselves because they feel suffocated. Also before Ears was born, one child was not able even to breathe that much effective through the lungs than through the skin and actually they put him inside of um, the specific um, environment, reach of oxygen and other uh, gases of the air, and he was able to live only inside. Other one function of the skin is water resistant. What does mean? The skin acts like a water resistant barrier, so essential nutrients aren't wasted out of our body. Inside of the skin, we store different kind of pigments. The main one is melanin, and melanin is a derivation of the tyrosine and dopa. And how you know the dopa? This is the main precursor of neurotransmitters inside of the brain. This is the precursor for epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. We store different kind of uh, hemoglobin fraction, actually not the main hemoglobin, but the fraction of the uh, hemoglobin when we get the injuries of our body. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide is this embryology of our skin. Our skin comes from ectoderm. And how you see on the left si side of the slide, this is the part from where actually during the weeks starts to evolve the neural tube and the neural plate. So... 
That means that ectoderm, our skin, and our neural system from the beginning, they are in one place. They have the common roots. And this is one more um, mark for you that our skin is actually expression of our brain. Actually, we express our brain and we interact with our brain, with outer world, through our skin. This is like hologram. If we accept the brain like a main point, we have a hologram view of our brain like on a sphere. It's our skin. On the right side, you see, when starts to form the neural tube, the ectoderm starts to be in between. And then, in evagination between the ectoderm and neural plate, starts to form thalamus, pituitary glands, and other parts of the hippocamp area. How you see, even from beginning, we have, again, I repeat myself, the closer connection between the skin, thalamus, hypothalamus, all the hippocamp, and at all the nervous system. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide is modeling how actually starts to grow our skin during the embryo, layers by layers. And how you see we start from the superface and then we add the different basal layers and different part of our skin. This is um, how to see again uh, positioning of different uh, cells with different shapes. And all the different kind of shapes contain the different function of that cells. So because of that, we say that our skin is, is the multiverse of layers because we have a lot of layers with, of different tissue with different uh, shape of cells and with different function of that cells. On the right side, you see even in the superface of epidermium, epidermis with the stratus corneum, we have the also specific positioning of the units inside. Even this is the outer, outer layer of our epidermis. So everything in our body is, is regarding the positioning of units, of cells, of tissue, of star formations at all. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide is this representation of innervation of our skin. So we start of that point that the, our skin and our neural system, they come from mostly one place. So how you see, we have different colors. It means different kind of nerves, they reach different places of our skin. And in medical language, we call that specific part of the skin with specific names. And when have the disease of that part of the skin, we are able to consider which one nerve has this harmonic state at the moment. On the right side, this is a small picture, just explanation of several nerves where they come from, from T1, T2, and 3, 4, and how you see, they got split and a lot of endings in different parts of, of, of the skin, what we call dermatomes. Actually, each part of the skin, each ending of the nerve, they get different kind of potential signal inside of the skin, but that you will see afterwards. So our skin, we separate in areas regarding which one nerve just end to that part and apply innervation to that part of the body cover it of the skin okay we go to the next slide 
Next slide is the representation for you on the left slide of the nervous system and how the nervous system just free to small, small, small branches. Finally, the end of ill branch just reach the specific cell inside of the skin. So we start with the nervous impulse inside of the brain. We spread through the spinal cord, through the spinal cord, through the different plexuses, nervous impulse finally reach each part of our skin and actually we have different endings of the nerves inside of our skin it's regarding which part they achieve derma hypoderma epithelium glands hairs follicles we have different ending and and this is because we call this nerve not only motoric endings but they belongs to the sensor nervous system of our uh, central nervous system. So, because of different shape of ending, we provide different kind of potential currency to our brain. On the right side, you are able to see the laser microscopy of the innervation inside of the skin, the black one picture with the blue and uh, green. Actually, in green, the, uh, the scientists capture it, how the nervous signal just go through the skin layers. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide this is a representation of the nervous ending inside of the skin. How you see on the small one central picture, how many branches of nerves we have inside of the skin. They more or less cover it all the part of the skin. We don't have a gaps without ending of some kind of nerve. Inside of the skin, how I told you, we have different nerves with different actions. This is for uh, sensation, for motor function, and we have different endings because the function of our skin is so complex. We're supposed to um, react to the different stimulus like a touch, like a temperature difference, like a water difference, like a air difference, like a, a sensitivity. Because of that, different endings of the nerves gave us different impulse, different oscillation. And how you see on the right side, you have the oscillation picture of different signals and they're actually like a barcode. So when the skin accepts the impulse, starts to produce different oscillation with different amplitude and uh, with different frequency, goes through different... Um, functional nerves ending and then because of that the brain recognizes what kind of impulse skin accept because actually of that coding of the signal this is uh, the same like binary code in our computers just make the coding of the signals and and the codings belongs of that the difference between the amplitude frequency, the more common characteristic of all oscillations. And then the brain understands what kind of um, interaction have the skin with outer world. On the bottom of the slide, uh, you see actually how the different nerves ending around the hair follicle, around the glands, and they have the specific uh, shape. They make like a shape of reactors around the hair follicle. And uh, actually, they have a row like your copper wires. So they connect with um, the part of, of the skin like uh, copper wires, and then they interact, they send the impulse to the skin and resent again the impulse to the brain. This is the same how you 
you use your Cooper wires when you connect your plates. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide is representation again the different coding of the signals inside of the skin. It's again how you see regarding where they reach, what part of the skin reach the specific nerve. So they start to code the signal and then the brain just accept that encrypted code and recognize what kind of symbol the skin accepted. And how you see, it is interesting that here we have the Merkel cells. The Merkel cells, this is the cells where they react from the pressure and touch. And they are part of the nervous system. Actually, they are the nervous cells itself. But it's also interesting that the cancer most often starts from that cells. So we have not only melanoma, like a base melanocytes of the skin, but we have cancer started from Merkel cells. Actually, what is, again, we say that the nervous system, even on the shape of cell, this is around our body, and um, she's able to produce the cancer cell also. And how you see, even inside the Merkel cell, this is the right side of the slide, they have a shape like inside of the, of the brain, and they connect like each other, like axon and dendris, like uh, synapses inside of the nervous system. And on the bottom of the slide, you see again the laser um, micrography of the skin and how the nervous signal just spread. When the signal uh, reach and the superface of the skin just go um, through the longitudinous of that area. So we have a, a vertical impulse from nerve and that vertical impulse like AC reach the superface and then in, in superface just spread like a river around in some kind of diameter around the ending of the nerve. Okay, so we go to the next slide. The next slide is a representation for you of different kind of skin. During our body, we have different organization inside of the cells in our ep uh, epithelium, in our, sorry, epidermis. This is because uh, different part of our skin in different part of our body have different function also cover different uh, organs and different part of our body their exposure to the outer world more or less is, is in not um, the same stage so we have difference between uh, the colors we have different between the thickness of our skin. No, so it's not only um, between uh, two people, but it's all, it is also in different parts in our body, we have different thickness of our skin. So we have one organization of the epidermis in our face, other one in our hands, other in our belly, in our leg, this is because of the function of that part of our body. And on, in, in the middle of the slide, the smaller one picture, you, you see that we have a fingerprint. This is our digital print, which is um, specific for each of us. No one two fingerprints there uh, match to each other. And mostly have a lot of uh, investigation that the shape of uh, DNA and fingerprints, they are related to each other. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide is the representation, again, uh, laser microscopy of uh, the epidermis. And how you see, we have the 
specific organization of the lamina inside of epidermis they are not random they make a specific shapes it's again the part of the body is regarding the part of, of, of the body and how you see they're more or less in in the shape of rump and one science on the name of Karim Habashi make a specific investigation between the 2D diamond structure and the 2D center a rectangular latitude comparison. So he find out that actually the shape of the diamond structure in the 2D is, is like a rhomb. And when he starts to apply the P sequences, he reached the 3D model of the diamond. On the right side of that picture, this is other one investigation, how dividing the P and golden ratio, you are able to calculate where you have the proton flow and where you have the electron flow and how you are able to recognize the, the uh, direction of current. So how you see even in our skin, we have organization between the cells and lamina like in diamond structure. Actually, our skin has the protection function because of the organization of that cells on that shape in the diamond structure. I speak about the healthy state of skin. And uh, if you see on the right side, it is burning after the sunburn. And you see, this is more or less the structure inside of organization. But when you have a a healthy skin, this is completely organization of the layers and the laminas inside of one layer like a diamond on the shape of diamond. And because of that, we are able to differ, uh, differentiate our inner world from outer world. This is completely um, <clears throat> shielding of our body. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide is, is the laser 3D microscopic view of our skin. In the middle of, of the slide, it is just cut it in between and you are able to see uh, the layers inside of, uh, of the skin. On the left side, you have a lemuring how the layers and lamels just go around you see how they make a specific pathways in the middle uh, you have a hair and of the middle of the slide it it's a ordinary microscopic view of skin this is like a structure of the leaf on the bottom of of the slide is this microscopic view of the leaf on the left side of that picture, this is the microscopic view of the skin with high resolution. So how you see, actually our skin have the same shape and organization of the cells inside like a leaf. Okay, so we go to the next slide. The next slide is anatomy of the skin. And we have a difference between the thick and thin skin with, with hair or without hair. And on, on the right and on the left, this is again microscopic view of the skin. So we have different layers of our skin and we start with epidermis. Epidermis itself have different layers is more like 13 inside. After the epidermis, we have derma. Derma contain all the vessels. This is the artery, vein, nerves, all the glands. And this is like we say uh, the transitional state of the skin. All the nutrition and the uh, transition of the nutrients 
goes inside of the derma. All immune cells, what we contain inside of the skin, is in derma. And after the derma, we have the subderma. This is more or less the fat tissue. And after that, we follow with the muscles layer in our body. So inside of the derma, if you remember when we spoke about the glands, we have the fat glands and also have the sweet glands. And um, this is the place for uh, the hair follicle. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide of the left side, you see when you have a normal skin, how much thick is the epidermis layer and when we have the dry skin so actually the water um, how much water contained inside of the skin give you the positioning of the layers uh, and the lamina inside and on, on, on the normal skin you, uh, you see the normal positioning between the lamina and the dry skin you see that positioning is just uh, destructed. What is mean that our diamond structure of the positioning of the laminus is already broken, so our shielding is more or less decreased. Okay, on the right side you see that um, the fat glands and the sweet uh, the sweet glands. If you remember, I told you they, they are on the shape. Of the glomerulus so how you hear from the beginning through the suite we also excrete the urea this is the metabolic product but we mostly excrete from kidney and on the right side you see that is the all the chemical reaction inside of the sweet glands if you remember, this is the same what we have in Bauman capsule and the tubular system inside of the kidney. Okay. So the next slide. The next slide is this representation again of different part of the skin and the, how you see uh, most of the thickness is from epithelium, uh, epidermis, different layers and how they positioning to each other. And then we have the transitional stratum germinativum from where actually grows all the cells. And they, when they develop during them state, they go up and up and up and actually the superface, this is the cells where they go to die. And on the right side, this is the circulatory system inside of the skin. And how you see, we have again the net between the venous and the artery part of the capillaries. They make a net and around that net, goes around all, all the cells inside of the derma. And the same shape you have in liver, in kidney, in, in, uh, in your lung. So all over we have repetitive model of the flow of the blood. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide is a representation for you of uh, the cells of melanin, the cells with the store melanin, and we call them melanocytes. So actually they are close to that blood vessels, how I told you, the net, and they store that pigment melanin. And why we need that pigment melanin. So actually activation of the melanin is, is because of the sun. When we have a sun, we start to produce the melanin and to store in our skin cells. So we have uh, the base part where the melanocytes just sit. They start to produce the melanin. This is the conversion from the tyrannocytes. 
tyrosine amino acid, then dopa, and different fraction of the melanin, and they go up to other cells. Okay, then we go to the next slide just to see why we need in need a um, melanin. So inside of melanocyte, we have a maturation state of melanin. I will not keep you busy with all the state and chemical reaction just to be aware of them. So uh, we have a base like a base, the storage place, and when we get the sun and uh, the light, this is like a click for that cells and for nervous system, they, they start to make a different maturation state of that base inside of the melanocyte. And finally, we get the two fraction of melanin. This is the same on the right side, but more chemical view of uh, the reaction. And important is here that we use the tyrosine amino acid. Then from tyrosine, we synthesize the DOPA. This is the main neurotransmitter in our brain. Then DOPA goes to the different chemical reactions. And finally, we get the melanin. So what actually we get it? We get it the peripheral neurotransmitter on the shape of melanin, like a pigment and it's not only that that we are able to make a store in our skin of that neurotransmitter okay then we go to the next slide the next slide is representation actually of uh, the melanin so we have the melanocyte and how you see there again like in shape of axons that is the more common shape in in our brain so uh, we have a storage place there from melanin and then when we have exposure to the sun just a different um, zones that go around and spread to the all epidermis on the left side this is the chemical formula of the melanin on the right side this is your 3d model of the melanin so when uh, on the left and right side of that picture is this comparison where you have the dark face and where we have the light face. So what happened during the dark side and what happened during the light side of the day. How the melanin just spread around. And just remember that picture because afterwards we'll be make comparison with the leaf. Actually the leaf works in the same manner. Okay, then we go to the next slide. So we have exposure to the sun and actually our skin interact with UV rays. UV rays starts to trigger the melanocytes and they start to produce and to derivate the melanin in different fractions. But actually, if you see on the right side, it is not only... Uh, UV rays trigger our skin. Also the visible light, uh, light also the ultraviolet radiation and radio waves. It is really interesting that radio waves, they are able to interact with our skin, also with melanocytes. And other one co comparison is that on the right side, where you have the microscopic view is like a tubus tubus on the split. This is the hairy cells inside of your inner air. Even the name is, is, is the same. And on, on the left side, this is the hair in your skin. Actually, when you accept the radio waves during the movement of the hair and hair follicles, you are able to retranscend the sound through our skin. And because of that, when we hear some music or when you are able to be in touch with the sound like a vibrational field, we feel through all our skin and then we interact 
with our brain immediately. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide is structure of melanocyte. From the beginning, just to make a comparison between the fish and frogs, but they also store the melanin. So when uh, they store the melanin in the middle of the center of the body structure, and when they have a light or some triggering impulse, they free the melanin for all directions, like a star formation, if you see on the middle of that slide. And actually, they have the tubular system inside of them, like actin and mucin in our muscles. And because of that tubular system and in, in conjunction with calcium, they are able to move the melanin in different parts of the body. And they use the melanin to change the color. This is like mimicry defense mechanism or like sepia just to pull out and to make a cloth around and during that cloth just to vanish from the place. Actually, all over our animal world, we use different kinds of pigments for defense. So we will see how we use our pigments. So on the left side, this is the melanocyte. And how you see the shape this is so similar, like a nervous cells. And this is the all again explanation of the reaction from the tyrosine to melanin. On the middle, you have the hair follicle and how starts the transaction of the melanin from the bottom to the top. Actually, melanin store not only in our skin, store in our hair, give the color of our hair. Also store in, in the pigment cells inside of our retina. And because of that, we have different colors of our eyes. And also have investigation, the shape of the eyes give you ability to accept different parts of the light spectrum. So because of that, you trigger different um, pigment cells inside of the retina. And actually, if you remember, we just generate impulses like a barcode and actually that kind of information we are able to accept inside of our eyes. So actually because of melanin and because of the shape of the eyes, different people accept different information from environment. doesn't matter they are in one place. Okay, so we go to the next slide. The next slide is comparison with the leaf. So the leaf, when interact with the light, starts to trigger the units inside where they contain the chlorophyll. And actually what happens when we have the light interaction with chlorophyll? Just spread to different molecules of glucose, of oxygen and water and using like a 16 azim reaction pre to the carbon dioxide, water and a, a huge amount of free electrons. And on the middle of, of, of the slide, you see actually what happened inside of mesophyll cells. When the leaf take in the CO2, start to conversion of the CO2 to malat, what contain the four carbons and then when the CO2 go out the malad starts to be peptide what contain the three carbons and then we again have the reaction of carbon hydrates inside of the leaves actually the chlorophylls give you uh, explanation how the leaf is able to produce itself free energy on the same manner we produce the free energy inside of our skin. So again, on the left side, this is explanation how 
happen, the deviation between uh, different um, part of the chemical reaction. So that chemical reaction and vice versa. But interesting is uh, to see that how we actually get the um, the convert point between different number, numbers of carbons and how finally because of the Kelvin cycle we get the carbon hydrates inside of the leaf. Actually leaf use the carbon hydrates to feed themselves. Okay, and because they use the carbon hydrates to feed themselves, they produce a huge amount of energy. And because of that, they are sustainable. The same happened in our skin. So the next slide, it is the representation for you. Okay, so this is the chemical reaction what we have. The tyrosine goes to DOPA and then DOPA with many chemical reaction to the phenol melanin and eomelanin. Actually, the shape of the DOPA is, is the aromatic benzoic nucleus. And because of that shape, it's able to spread to different other shapes again on the same aromatic chemical components. Actually, the melanin have same aromatic shape of the structure. And all our colors, they are um, already written in our DNA. And when we have decoding of amino acid consequence inside of the DNA, that much and that kind of protein starts to be synthesized. For example, different melanin shapes of the consequence of the element starts to be, um, how to say, p positioning in different directions in space. And because of that positioning between the different chains, we get different colors. For example, the first one picture, this is the brown color. So that positioning between the chains give you a reflection of light brown and the second one is, is the pearl color so the pearl co color have that positioning of the chain and give you the reflection of, of light on that spectrum okay then we go to the next slide one science of the name of dr solis discover that how the chlorophyll in the leaves works the same reaction is happened actually in our skin because the chlorophyll and melanin they are so close in them chemical components and he discovered that two molecules of water in reaction of melanin in catalyzator sun give you two molecules of hydrogen oxygen and four free electrons and actually, that his discovery, he used it to make a battery for free energy. And with that, his discovery, he starts to um, try to find out how to cure people with blindness, with Parkinson and Alzheimer's diseases. It's why Parkinson and, and Alzheimer's diseases, because they're related with the level of dopamine and how you... Uh, listen before that, the dopamine is derivation of dopa and precursor for melanin. So actually, we store the pigment in our skin. What is the ending of the neurotransmitter metabolism? And that pigment is able to store inside of our skin the sunlight and that sunlight derivate the water in hydrogen, oxygen, and free four electron, which is the free AC what we have inside of our skin. Actually, our skin works the, like a sun battery. Store the energy, split the water, 
and get the free energy inside. So we have in our skin the system on the shape of melanin that we are able to produce the free energy. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide is the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll and of melanin. And how you see, uh, the chlorophyll absorb the light like a pix, but on the right side you see that melanin absorb the light and keep on the level. Just is mean that the melanin is is able to store and to keep the potential of energy inside. <laughs> okay, so. Actually, we have the sun battery in our skin. Okay, then we go to the next slide. Also, the same is, is, is value for everywhere where we have a melanin. This is the hair, this is the eyes, and other parts of our body where they're able to contain that substance melanin. Okay, on the left slide, uh, on the left side of the next slide is, is the microscopic laser view of melanin and organization of the particles inside. On the right side, this is the view of the solar panel and the working of the solar panel. And how you see and remember the structure of our skin, this is the same. Actually, we have the solar panel in, in the shape of our skin, what we are able to accept the fields from the light. Actually, we are able to eat the light from our skin and store that light on the shape of melanin. Okay, then we go to the next slide. The next slide is, is a representation of one experiment of one science of the name of Mark Kushner, and he developed that when you have interaction of different fields, plasma fields, or different fields where they're able to make the AC currents, how they penetrate the skin. And he discovered that from the beginning, skin have a huge resistance, and that resistance uh, make uh, not able all part of the flow go inside of the skin. And then he starts to make different kind of experiments of, with different kind of flows and actually recognize what is the resistance of the skin. And he, um, uh, I mean, he discovered that our skin is not only because of the shape of the uh, lamering inside have the stable resistance, but also because have a fat uh, liquid state above, at that liquid state uh, above, and the mineral transport and ions in the membrane of cells make a current on the superface of our skin. So that current, this is the other one, defense mechanism of our skin. So in the next slide, you see exactly the explanation. So first of all, uh, look on the right side. On the right side, this is the numbers of the conductivity and permeability and permeability of the other parts of our skin. And actually from top layer of our skin, this is the sebum part. This is the teeny liquid fat layer. What have the specific permeability? And actually how you know the fat mostly act like a resistor. It's not like a conductor. But when you are able just to remove that part or to make a pore in that part and go in deep, actually all the layers inside of the epidermis and that teeny sebum layer starts to act like a membrane. And he discovered 
different stages of acting of that membrane to the point to make a hole. And actually because of his discovering, we are able to make a invagination of the skin acting like a membrane to make a hose and current AC to go inside of our skin. This is the same explanation when you have a system and we speak about the it effect. So when you have the AC touching the superface, this is because of that effect, you start to have change exchanging of the direction of magnetic fields on the superface and you get two um, new fields around what they turn on the opposite direction like a clockwise and upper clockwise. Actually that happened in our skin. What we have interaction with some kind of impulse, our skin starts to make that kind of flow on the superface like clockwise and upper clockwise. If you remember when Luca explained it to you during the TEACH uh, workshop, he said the same about the, his reactor and the shape of flow, what he get it. We have the same flow in our energy system. And actually here it is interesting just to speak about the skin deep effect. It is mean how much the alternative current is able to penetrate in deepness to the point of uh, to get the resistance from the conductor. Actually, if you compare our body like a conductor inside and our skin like a resistor outside, everything what is able to touch us is mean like impulse from like a touch, like a, some kind of um, sensor impulse, or even if you speak about the emotions, we are able to measure in that skin effect deepness with that impulse, that AC of that impulse is able to penetrate inside of the skin. Actually, that is the deepness, skin deepness of interaction between the uh, resistance and conductor is measured for most of the tissue inside of our body. And actually because of that, you are able to see on the right side of the slide, this is the uh, singularity during the time how resistance of our skin behave. So actually because of the organization in the lamina, like a diamond structure, is because of that resistance, because the ability to change the fields and organize them in the specific manner. Actually, our skin this is our defense and shielding mechanism. On the last slide is I just want to show you how water penetrates. This is because everything what we say just skin starts to work like a membrane and just water go inside between that pores and how you see take a specific shape in between the cells of epidermis. So again even when we accept different uh, matter state or impulse we start to position in the specific shape the cells and all the units inside of the skin. Okay, that is from my side. Thank you very much for attention. If you have a question, please ask me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elia. It was a great presentation on the skin. Some fantastic shots there. I'll put the one back with, with the hanging skins. They have so many things to say about the skin, but we have, we need the hours, you know. Yeah, what an amazing organ, the largest organ of the body, I understand. <clears throat> so, the largest one. Yes, um, we have uh, some questions here that uh, perhaps you can address. Um, we have a question. 
males have more body hair compared to females? Does this influence the nervous system or is it just a matter of hormones? The hormones and nervous system and how you know this is the, the same things. It's because the hormones come because of the nervous system and vice versa. And uh, about the hair around the body have uh, different uh, explanations. This is because of the climate. Uh, this is because of uh, different gen expression. And also Mr. Kesh has one famous explanation that is regarding the... Uh, how he say, expectation of the women of that region, you know? And because of that, the men s start to mutate. I love this explanation of him, and probably he will tell you most um, deeper about that. Okay. You like that because you think women are in charge. Do you want to talk about that now or later, Mr. Kesh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, we can. There is no problem. It's a scientific research. I've got Armand laughing his head off in the background. Can he, he can hear him. Uh, it's a scientific research, uh, which is done uh, by a number of scientists around the world. Uh, it's published uh, later. And that is... Uh, why the northern European uh, men are becoming less and hair, less hairy than the, uh, what do you call it, Middle Eastern or other part or different part of the world, men don't have hair. And this ends up, the conclusion has been that they wanted to see how the progress of hair uh, or loss of hair by men uh, has come to be. And the only way, uh, wherever they search from the remains of past thousands of years, um, they could not find any hair because most of the hair and the skin is destroyed during the process of the decay. So they came out, the only way they could follow up when and how men lost hair, uh, body hair, uh, was through lice. Because different lice uh, exist in different parts of the human body and their remains stays in the place when the body is, uh, has died. And the conclusion of the research has been that uh, men lost the hair according to the uh, emotion of the women. Uh, as you go to further north pole, the northern part of the planet, or the cooler, cooler part, uh, or very what you call it, humid part, uh, the women like more physical touch or less physical touch according to how the emotion can be carried and how um, it allows them to keep themselves cool. So uh, the conclusion was that in, in the white skin orientation, because of the cooler climate, uh, you would demand more energy from your partner so you, you don't need the hair because the hair is a blanket is a gap. So the men orientate towards uh, losing their hair to satisfy the female, to be able to be more uh, reproductive of their own, what do you call it, generation, or their, uh, what do you call it, genes. So the, the research conclusion is that women decide the amount of hair on the men, not the men. And this throws a huge question mark how much men are in charge of their own lives, which comes to nothing, zero. And uh, this is all to do with the skin, emotion of the skin, and how we transfer energy or absorb energy uh, from one body to another. And that's, I think, that's what Dr. Elia likes about it, because it confirms women decide everything. Even though us men think we, we, are, we are the king, and it's, as I was explaining to Armand and Marco, is the puzzle of the key. Uh, you know, you have a key the other side of the door before you go put the key in and go through the frame. You're a prime minister and you enter the house and you're, you're a servant to the madame. So either way, either way, nature has shown the same way because uh, in general is the woman who decides the 
from the gene of pools of men in the, in the world, uh, who and how the best uh, uh, reproduction line will come from. Um, in so many ways, pardon? I was going to ask, what about the hair on women? Do men determine the hair on women, or do women determine the hair on women? Ah, that is a very big question mark. That is the biggest question mark. Why should you, should, why women or men have more hair in different part of the body and the others don't have, and why we have different color of hair? And what decides? It's all to do with emotion. It's the emotion and sensuality and sexuality, which is part of the emotion, which decides most of these. Um, if you go on the videos of the uh, Keshe Foundation, some five or six, seven years ago, uh, we had a gentleman who uh, started using the systems. Because his condition was mainly dictated by emotion, when the emotions were set, uh, his wife, who was doing most of the videoing, continuously refers to his hair becoming black and having more hair. And in our research we have shown, because we make some psychological cups which affects the emotion, we have seen the uh, different hair color grown back to normal, or what it was the color originally, and more hair, and in a way through emotional cups we dictate the, the the color of the hair and the thickness of the hair and the density of it. So, uh, women who have hair, you have to go back into the origin of their, their, their life from the uh, what their preference has been or in the generation has been and how the genes have set in that structure. Uh, women decided themselves over billions of years to to lose hair uh, or to to change the hormones uh, in a way to be more attractive or be different than the man don't forget to recent past let's say even now in some tribes around the world uh, men human beings were like animals we had no clothes to cover ourselves to cover our emotions to cover our feelings and our skin, the texture of our skin and the color of the hair showed our emotion, showed our feeling, because that's what Dr. Elio originally explained. The skin is part of the brain structure. So, what we have done, we have changed impartially the way we want it, according to what we want it you'll find there are women who change their texture according to which man they are with. It's the same with men. Because the, the opposite side creates a different emotions, which is, uh, reacts to different texture. Um, scientifically, we know uh, a large number of women uh, change texture of their body. The structure of the body texture changes according into the cycle of the month they are, and secondly, in how they feel which which partner they are. It's the same with men. So, even the structure of the hair, how and who and the way we have uh, hair is very much dictated in this uh, structure. So, uh, it's not so much men who decide, is so much women who decide on what and how and what they want to attract. Um, we seen this in our work, in our research, uh, in different ways. Um, some uh, men and some women even change skin, the texture, in certain part of their body, according to the environment they are. The impact, uh, the impact changes. Somebody is cooking in the background in the pot. Um, the the uh, pigmentation changes, color. Um, the hair changes. 
in so many ways, now there is a research that you can even, through emotional part, working of the heart, you can even grow hair within a matter of a few weeks, even for the bold men. Uh, this, um, this, uh, this is part of the beginning of the research here, in the, which we will show this in the, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, because when you um, you enter through the blood, which touches the emotion and is in the right order of the strength, you change the skin, the skin texture and the hair growth. Uh, this is why sometimes when emotionally people get an emotional shock, we see part of the hair becomes white on the head, or patches on the skin changes color. It's the desire to be and desire to reach. Uh, we see emotion with the skin a lot in the black, who will like through the pressure, psychological pressure of the society, or a hierarchy, or desire to be different emotionally, they start getting some lighter impregnation of the skin. Um, and this structure is very, very clear. In Africa, um, where the white race has been as, uh, uh, what they call, masters and slavery of the time, we see in black families, this have been all the whole family, all the children are black, and one child turns up to be blue eye and white skin, totally white. I've seen myself two or three times this in Africa when I was working. And the first time when I saw it, I saw a child between the door sticking his head out, and I asked the lady who was with me, how come is, are they looking after it? No, she says here, it happens. Because generations passed, the, the, what do you call it, they were a child, or there was a white uh, man with a black woman relationship, and the child now, after generations, we still see other whites coming up. But, in some cases, the child tries to be the same as the family. So we see sometimes uh, darker skin impregnation on the skin. Or you see the children in the family try to be like the white one, and you see uh, splashes of white on the skin. I studied this in the, in Congo uh, quite some times ago. So, because the Congolese have a lot of uh, contact with the Belgians and uh, people from the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, and you see these things quite, it's, it's not so regular, but you see them in the specific areas. So, why suddenly these things happen, how we change color, and how we add to the color. Uh, we see the color of the skin is the expression of uh, the emotion, and at the same time, the structure of what we want to be. Uh, there are people who have white uh, impregnation on their skin, even in Europe, you have a whiter skin than the normal skin. Uh, it's a kind of uh, darker brown skin with a white, whiter skin uh, splashes on it. I studied this about eight, nine years ago, just before I go to Iran, uh, because the Iranian scientists are deeply involved in these kind of things, because of the uh, different environments within the country. And one of the solutions that the doctors have found to bring the colors together, and can sustain time of, let's say, three to six weeks, you don't get, uh, you get the skin all looking the same, is literally mm, skinning the aubergine and adding salt to the skin, boiling it for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then you use a cotton ball and you just uh, uh, put it on the patches for a few minutes to the skin color you need. And because the impregnation is uh, natural, from the natural material, and because it carries a salt, which is part of the structure, in a cooking condition, that as the skin of the, what we have as salt content in the body, the, it gets absorbed, and uh, the water impregnation sacs gets the color of the aubergine, and it stays there. So, uh, you can change the color of skin, by just using this, uh, um, 
dark brownish, depends how dark you want it from the skin of the, uh, what do you call, eggplant, so we call it origin. The structure of the skin is very much, uh, is a sealed vacuum condition creation between a, um, containing what you call the ganses as a solid matter with a gas outside. It's very much the skin of the man is an atmosphere uh, of, or uh, is the upper atmosphere of the a planet, what we call the human body. Dr. Elia showed us hexagonal shapes and different diamond structure shapes on the skin. In fact, if you go back to uh, part of the knowledge seeker, I think number 54 or 55, and in other ones, I have explained how you have hexagonal shape um, clouds on upper northern layers and pole of the Saturn, or a lot of gaseous planets. Because of the three-dimensional, three layers of GANs, the rotation and the current uh, flow between the plasmas creates hexagonal diamond structure. Because of the linkage in the energy in, as we said, a straight line formation. If you go back into the, the teaching of the crystal production or diamond structure, I explained on a specific condition, the shape of the spherical shape of the plasma through the forces of the environment and itself internally according to plasma current flow dictates straight line flow forces. And that straight line flow forces we see at the boundary of the, what we call the hexagonal clouds on the northern hemisphere. The same thing happens in the skin of the man. The skin of man has three layers of ganses of different densities and different plasmatic gravitational magnetic flow. So, this hexagonal structure is due to three gas layers of different densities, plasmatic gravitational magnetic field strength densities, that leads to the creation of the shape and the structure of the skin of the man. And there is no other reasons for it, because we've seen it, replication of it, in uh, structure of the plasma of the uh, star systems and the planetary systems. When you look in time, from a distance, certain solar systems, on the outer boundary of the atmosphere, you still see the hexagonal structure, the same as Saturn. It's a normal how the matter changes and converts from one structure of the density of the gas to another. And in fact, the three layers and the current flow between the three layers, which we've seen Dr. Elia going through in depth in explaining it, it shows the current flow in a plasmatic gravitational condition in three densities of ganses, which lead to the structure, the upper layer, which is what we call the outer skin. There is no difference between the skin of the man in the outer layer and the upper atmosphere of the uh, planet or a solar system. It's the barrier point. If you enter it the right way, you can, you can penetrate. If you don't, enter it the right way, it creates a resistance, so it bounces you off. It's the same thing as we see with the skin of man. It's a containment, and this containment over millions of years has perfected itself to a tight pack structure, uh, what you call gas materials. There is exact similarities, but at the same time, as is the skin, you call it, has to have a decision-making of his own, and at the same time has to have a control in respect to uh, the central control, what you call the brain. That's why, as Dr. Elio explained, on every inch you have up to 20 blood vessels coming to it. Because it's part of the emotional part, it dictates the survival guarantee of the existence of the uh, what you call the emotional part of the body of the man, and itself makes decision. In so many times, in so many ways, up to now, world of medicine doesn't understand why 
up to and past certain percentage of the skin burn leads to death. Because on the same structure as the emotion and the physical part and the soul connect to each other and as one decides that it does not have enough to give, as I explained in other brain structure section, that when the physicality and the emotional part separate or interact in the opposite direction that the separation takes place, that the physical death comes. As the skin is part of the brain structure, the same thing happens. The emotional part cannot support the physical part. And that's why with the body, what you call a first degree or third degree burn or whatever, death occurs. Because the emotional part, containment, cannot support the physical part. And the two separation comes. Because the neurosystem of the emotional part of the body from the containment sits on the skin of the man. The same way, uh, Dr. Elia explained that uh, we see the same structure as with the kidney. And if you go back to the section when we spoke about the kidney, we spoke about why kidney has that structure, and the structure is the same as is extracting emotional energy from the blood vessels, which come back to it. And it releases it as urine as an energy level, if you go back to the teaching of the kidney. The same structure happens with the skin. Skin is another kidney work, which extracts what the body does not need in the emotional level, and as with the water, adds it up to release it. That's why your order changes according to your emotion. That's why you can smell the order with conjunction with the sweat. Order is gas in a gas state, diamond structure. So, your body does exactly the skin as because it's irresponsible for the emotional part with the release of the same thing. It's a, it's a kidney inside out. But at the same time, due to the release of fields out, it absorbs a huge amount of energy in from its environment. And that's why I always say, 80% of the energy we absorb, comes from the environment. As much as you release skin and the sweat, which is a part of the structure of the release, it has to come back in the gravity. This, the sweating is like the magnetical field forces. And you release so much fields out, the gravitational field forces attracts energy back in, in replacement and it creates the charge difference externally and internally on what you squeeze in. And you find the pressures and the temperatures and the energies and currents which uh, on when is slowed down enough to the plasmatic magnetic gravitational field of electron motion in the orbit of one electron, we measure it as a current. In fact, the energy absorbed from the environment is in a plasmatic condition, and is huge. So, in totality, what you spread out, out of your body as a sweat, that creates a current flow, inverse of gravitational pull, which is created not just by the skin, but by all the elements inside the body of the man. Because now, the man, the body of the man internally, be it your intestine, the heart, the liver, they create their own gravitational magnetic field, which takes absorption of the field stronger than the environment. So, that's how we absorb so much energy internally towards ourselves from our environment. If you have an empty space next to you, has no interaction. It's just gases and it's in balance. But now you have the body of the man, which is billions of plasmas, as in a Gans state, creating their own gravitational magnetic field. Now you understand why the skin is the barrier, not to allow what is not needed, and only allow out what is not needed. 
So, this heavy of, uh, heavy mass of gans of uh, uh, body parts, which is covered in a sack of the skin, has a greater gravitational magnetic field in respect to the environment next to it. What does it do? Because it's a heavy mass, it absorbs fields from its environment. And that's why you, through the skin, extract 80% of the energy needed for daily life. Maybe now that explains to you why I always said that we only take up to 20% of the energy daily intake through food or air we breathe. The rest comes through what we call gravitational magnetic field strength inertia of the body of the man in respect to his environment. It's heavier, it's stronger, and what does it do? So extracts, continuously extracts energy from his environment. If it was not supposed to do, it would have been the same as itself, it would have, there was no need for the skin to cover it. The heart, the bone, the intestines, the food, the muscles, all these create a stronger field because of the density mass ratio in respect to the environment. So, what does it do? It has to absorb, it has to extract energy from, from where it is. If you put man in a vacuum condition energy total zero, man will die immediately faster than stopping the breathing. Instantaneously man dies. This, in some places in the universe, is, is used for exclusion. What they call unitasia, when you want people want to, to end a life. You don't do, you cut energy from the environment of the life. In deep space, when you come into the viruses, which cannot be controlled, you cut the energy supply to the virus area. Virus is a kind of high-density field environment, very much like a skin body of the man within the skin of the man. You don't go and spray it, you don't use pesticides or God knows whatever, or uh, 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 what do you call it, antibiotics. You do two things, you extract the energy from it, or you cut off the line of the energy to it. Then, itself dies instantly, or converts to its own mass. So, it's the same with the body of man. If, in the future, when we can show, and not to create life to end, but in a position of being able to confirm the correctness, in allowing to cut the total, creating a zero field flow, you'll find out that life ends instantaneously, faster than breathing. Because digestion takes time, air, few seconds. Environment, because it's so much dependent on it, is instantaneous. It's a silent way of execution, but very rapid because the body of a man, due to his mass, contained with the layer of the skin, creates the, literally like a potato jacket, which has a mass, and it has inertia mass of the plasma. Don't forget the word I use, inertia mass of the plasma. This is very important, because you have an inertia mass of a matter, but you have an inertial mass of a plasma, and this is applicable in space technology heavily. You increase the, uh, by number of the elements within the body, you have a higher density mass, compared to the environment you have, and because the structure holds to each other, as a body of the man, so it means has a central gravitational field force. And if, there is a central gravitational field force, so it absorbs energy from its environment too. And in that respect, the skin decides on its layer, the way we've seen hexagonal shape, what rays in what angle can enter, that satisfies the need of the energy for that environment. <coughs> and according to this, 
we change the color of the skin. Dr. Elia went in depth in explaining about uh, the chemical reaction. But just look at the pictures he showed. You see in that structure of uh, the formula she showed, you see a single nitrogen. The rest is oxygen, hydrogen and carbon. That nitrogen gravitational magnetic field is the energy releaser for the whole structure. Understand the totality and then you understand how you absorb and how much radiation you need to be able to absorb. In the structure she showed us, she carries a nitrogen in one point in the whole formula. You have oxygen which is balanced, 6-6, six, six, with a carbon, 8-8 eight, eight, with oxygen. You have a hydrogen which is single atom, but in fact is a plasma which is releasing, dictating its energy. It's a nitrogen who has seven structure, which means one nitrogen, one neutron is releasing too much energy to reach a balanced condition. If that nitrogen, uh, neutron, energy released, is added by conversion, what you're going to get is uh, isotopes of oxygen, because now it's eight. If it loses that neutron, then you become a carbon, six, six. Because the new structure will lead in the molecular plasmatic gravitational magnetic field into the structure of a helium and conversion to hydrogen. So, the main factor in all the links we've seen is the nitrogen. Exactly the same as what we see, we call it centralization, release of energy. In the, in the dimension that that energy can be absorbed due to gravitational mass of the oxygen, by the hydrogen, or be released by the hydrogen. Then, you understand why you have all the structures which we've seen here today. How to allow how much energy to enter the body. And that is totally controlled. Totally controlled by the nitrogen itself. And the orientation, according to the environment, the radiation which passes through another nitrogen layer, which we call the upper atmosphere of the Earth. That's why we change the color, according to the position in respect to the Sun. The two have a common denominator, in what we call centralization, or what we call energy release, according to the neutron extra energy mass. So, if we look at the totality of it, then we understand why the skin is connected to the emotion. Because it dictates what energy absorbed, what energy needs to be released, what energy is to be stored to be used in the future and how much there is a shortage. And that's why we see with the sun um, reduction in the northern European nations, Scandinavian nations, we see higher committed suicide rate. Because the right fields which affects the emotion in respect to existence, comes through this conversion. And when there is not enough, there is no reason to live exactly like a sunburn. Exactly like when your skin burns. The ratio of the emotional part in respect to the physical part, changes according to the nitrogen level, and then there is no reason to live. And then we see depression. We see all sorts of um, uh, side effects with emotional stability and suicide. Understand the totality, because in deep space, the structure of how 
and how much radiation you allow at what strength to flow within the aircraft, what you call the spaceship, dictates the mental structure and the stability and the peace within the passengers. <coughs> you control the emotion of your passengers through the environmental magnetic gravitational field which you release within the structure. You want riots, just change one matter through the skin. Energy expectation goes up, the emotional changes and you have your riots. You want a peaceful, um, what you call, passengers. You change the position, the structure of the release of the fields by your reactors. Because goes back to what I explained in the programs before, in the other teachings. We've seen the change in the structure of the same family structure in India, the ones who became part of Pakistan, huge meat consumption, high energy dosage, and the same family who stores the Hindus, and have, they use a different structure of protein as vegetables. The same field structure in a space, through the skin, will dictate the behavior of the passengers. It, it dictates the memory span of the passengers. Through certain field strength, through the skin, you can create conditions where the passengers do not even remember they come from planet Earth. Then, you don't have missing homes, because home is not there to go back to. This is what I explained to the American delegation and the scientists we had with us a few times in the past three, four years. That how we can take and change the environment of the aggression and the war, that people don't even remember why they're carrying a gun. We do not so much reach the brain, we reach the skin of the man, through the feeding of the environment, through plasmatic magnetic field. It's very simple, but you have to understand how and why and how it's done. You create a different dimension, gravitational magnetic field of strength, which can affect the nitrogen level in a plasmatic condition, in the structure of the amino acid as a gans. The more you have to release because of the absorption of the energy, the more energy hyperactivity comes but because with the emotion, it becomes aggression. If you can reach a balance, and in the systems which are getting developed by us here in Italy, and uh, we see some development within the French and the Chinese, uh, what do you call it, uh, Sohail and others, we are reaching a point that we can measure exactly how to keep the man in a condition we need in a space. And all is done through the emotion of the skin. Majority of it is done. Because when you go to the emotion in the center of the brain, you already have to go through another layer of material to show reaction, emotion in respect to the environment which is already outside. You feel the skin, you touch the skin, you like the touch because it's the right gravitational magnetic field which what we call pleasure. You accept it. You enforce a field by hitting. You dictate a rapid increase in energy, what we call pain. Or what man has got used to, to know as a punishment, by a slapping, for example. It's emotional interaction on the skin level, which is part of the body of the man. How? this thing has been built, how many structures we see has been shown by Dr. Elia, is irrelevant. How the material energy extra extracted from the environment, absorbed and used, that's what it counts. So, in space, we look deeply in the color of the skin. If you have certain number of, let's say, uh, Africans, and you have a certain number of Chinese, and you have a certain number of Northern Europeans, you will find out, you have to find a common denominator energy, that all three 
in structure of the skin are happy to receive that you don't create aggression in the, in the Chinese and pleasure and softness in the black and then not knowing where you are in the white. The reason I chose the skin structure today is because we're coming to the end of the body and the skin is the most important. It contains all the elements and organs we have talked about from the beginning of the session one. Through the skin of man, you dictate how much energy is needed, that you can feed him without even energy being needed to consume the other 20%. But you have to know how you do it. We can't make flight just for uh, black, dark skin, one for brown only, or one for what I call WC, white color only. The structure has to be understood by the scientists, how you use the nitrogen structure absorption and release of energy, which is the, in every element of every amino acid within the structure of the body of the man. Oxygen creates a gravitational field. Nitrogen it creates the magnetical field, due to extra neutron. The rest is in balance. But, you have an element which is a hydrogen, in disbalancing the whole equation, in absorbing or releasing, depending on its position in the mass and rotation of the neutron, what you call the electrons as you call it, or rotation of the plasma, the speed of the rotation of the plasma. which, as we've seen now with the, in the case of Fukushima, you connect the structure with the radiation, and it links up, but that energy, when you get from a radiation source, increases the speed of the rotation of, let's say, uh, another uh, Gans. It's not that it just absorbs, it dictates the speed of rotation and the position of then you call it different diseases in the structure of the man, if you understand the same thing. Look why certain people have different diseases on their skin. Why we use skin to express our impression of the, how we feel. There is a disease that a lot of people know, which is people who are heavily attention deficiency orientated. They want to have everything from everyone. What are called the leeches of the world. They want all the energy, because somewhere in their structure, they do not find emotional satisfaction with getting it from one person, one man or one woman. What do they do? They create a condition where what Everybody can see and get, pay attention, that they get the energy from their environment. You see these people claiming to be mainly sick, lack of energy, because this is the way they live. And the only sign you see with them on their skin, as I explained, we change our skin according to our emotional condition. We see the shape of butterfly on their face, between the upper eye and the upper cheek. We all know what this disease is called, Dr. Elia can explain to you. Why do you create a butterfly shape in front of your face, right? Where everybody is the first point of contact. Because you get the attention. It means psychologically you're a thief. Done. In so many ways, these are the last people you ever want as passengers in deep space, because they disturb the condition of the environment. You see them, there are numerous of, number of them in the, in, the, in the Western world. They have a red butterfly shape on, on, their, uh, on their forehead and uh, upper cheek. Attention seeking, I need energy. And, in respect to 
what you've done, why she got this thing on her face, or him, absorb, this is the energy we start looking for, that is stealing bits. This is the heavier cells, which absorbs, attracts energy from the environment. And in a way, when you claim, I don't have anything, I don't have anything, you get more and you get more. And they will never be satisfied, because they go from one behavior to another. A lot of the structure, skin of the man, shows the behavior of the man. The ones which are birth defects, you cannot discuss. The ones which come psychological defects, or psychological presentation, you can see. When you are not emotionally happy with the existence, you get psoriasis on the ankle, on the joints. Why the joints? The joints is both a point of the attachment to another piece. You want to be detached from what is bothering you. Then, what you do, through the emotion and the condition of psychological condition, you create different salt density in the middle layer of the skin to the bottom layer. And this, salt uh, content, or salinity, creates like a wound. And this wound creates a soreness, and then it creates, creates attention, in bringing energy, and then you get the skin growth, rapid reduction, and so you get the, the cirrhosis on your joints, and on, on, on the position of attachment to life. I want to be detached, have a look, I don't want to be here, this part I don't need to be. Why do we mainly see this problem on the joints, on the skin? Um, excuse me, Mr. Yes. Mr. Keshe, this is uh, very interesting. It's um, time for the Spanish-speaking workshop, though. I'm wondering if you'd like to continue a bit, or shall we wrap it up and get on to the Already, Spanish? Already, I think you, we are, what's the time now? Time is, um, well, it's, um, your time is uh, what, 5 p.m., I believe. Yes, we start the Spanish at 6. No, we start at 5, from 5 to, till 6. The way I understand it is oh. the university closes at 6, so we can't go beyond 6. Ah, oh, okay, no problem. Is that I true? You won't, we only have till 6 uh, total? We can go till 6.30, they stay open till 6.30. I see. Yeah, because I was just talking, these things will change when the institute opens up. We go till 8 o'clock. Yeah, the, the things are already getting organized, but it doesn't matter, we can... Uh, we get we off can to a, delay a, by a few minutes, right. no problem. Okay, so, are there any questions? Well, there are questions, um, if you want to address a couple in the, the next couple of minutes, perhaps. Uh, there's one that's um, been running here about navis or moles, black spots on the skin. Can one determine a neural issue or psychological problem from the position on the body? Of what? Of moles or black spots. Uh, not really, not according to what we understand. So the position is not indicative of anything in particular, as far as you know? No. Okay. Is there an easy trick to keep the skin in a youthful condition? Yes. Armin is looking strangely. Yes, it is. I think Dr. Elliot can tell you how. Can we have a quick explanation, perhaps? The yeah. young skin is uh, very well explained, I think, by Dr. Elia in her part, if you understood how you can keep your skin young. Maybe Dr. Elia can explain it, and then we can add to it. Are you still there, Elia? 
Yeah, I'm here, but explanation is not so short. If you want, after the next workshop, just to make the workshop about the questions of all the workshops, you know, it's because not that short and you don't have a time now. That's true. Um, I think more good solution. Okay, that makes sense. Um, perhaps we should have a workshop with uh, questions like this. I think we do it the next workshop. Yeah. Okay, the next workshop is just questions. And Dr. Elia will answer all of them. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. I, I, get, I get a day off. <laughs> yes. Okay, should we wrap up the uh, health workshop for now? Yes, no, why not? So we go straight to the Spanish workshop. That's right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed for your time. Thank you, Mr. Cash, and thank you, Dr. Elia Kostova. And uh, this is the end of the 25th Health Teaching Workshop. The skin is the shielding defense system. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Bye.